Saturday through Monday, 22 people were shot, five people killed, and there were four triple shootings. He's now going to be arrested. Here we go. Oh, here, here we go. Back to his car and begins pumping gas when the suspect runs up shooting. Can't tell if there's a police officer in that car. just gotta try something innovative man because the trauma is real people are living in post-traumatic stress today we are joined by colonel melvin russell and dante barnsdale to help address a very real attention that exists throughout the community of baltimore if not across the united states policing during my era is way different than what it is now we all grew up in baltimore so playing cops and robbers when we were little and now doing it for real when I looked at people like Tay like that, that was like my little brothers, my nephews. But Tay, you breaking the law, I'm gonna have to put my foot up in your behind. Watch out for Malcolm Russell. <laughs> <laughs> he fast, man, you better not run. <laughs> Colonel Russell actually arrested Dante many years ago, and he went on to spend eight years in prison. They cornered me like right by the laundry bin. I had on this big sombrero, like the big like hat from Mexico. We used to put the pills and stuff like in the poles, like the poles had holes in them. He came straight to the damn thing, got the pills out the hole, said, you just stupid. You out here uh, selling drugs with a big sombrero on. You just stick out like a store thug. Back in the day when we were policing and getting our hustle on, there was not only a mutual respect, there was an absolute love between us. And some people say, that's really weird. How can a police love a hustler? And how can a hustler love a police? But if I was to really get hurt, them dudes would care about that. And I didn't want to see them get hurt. Yeah. Same, we had a coexist in the same neighborhoods, I had a role to play, and they felt like they had a role to play, and we were getting it on every day. My mother made me promise her that I was going to finish school. When I came home from jail, it was like a little bumpy road. I'm working, I'm going through what I'm going through, but it was always that sense like I ain't doing enough. I went back to school and got a master's degree, I got a bachelor's degree, and it was harder for me because as you get older, you know, you forget stuff. By uh, 91, 92, I had arrested over 5,000 people and mostly for violence and drugs. Then it got to the point where I was arresting not just the sons, but I was arresting the fathers and the grandfather. Three generations and the same family. These dudes are doing stuff to each other all day, every day. He run and get something from him, mess his package up. Go to the next person, mess his package up. Go to the, I tell you, you looked up, you've been hustling 10 years. You done messed up 20 dudes, 30, 40, 50 dudes' packages. Yeah. You don't know which one of them going to get you. Violence perpetuated in games. We see the music has become more illiterate, more gangster oriented than ever. But can fundamentally, what is what is the desire? What is the urge that's pushing people to focus on that rather than focus on the future? How can you focus on the future when you hungry? A person doesn't maintain their basic needs that they can't move to the next level. These kids stuck at eating, shelter, and safety. Don't nobody in this society feel safe. No, you see him running? They caught me down there with a sombrero on. <laughs> there is no more relationship, not like the way we grew up. There's no more relational equity. We are bankrupt in that area. Emotionally, physically, spiritually, man, we are bankrupt. We are drained. Each one get one. Little people got to take care of themselves, right? You don't even have parents being parents. Even if you grew up in the so-called projects, your parents was taking care of you, man. Absolutely. Now these kids raising themselves. I'm rounding out the kids where everybody else gave up on them. They're walking around homeless, they ain't going to school. We take them out the woods. It's the first time they've seen stars. We take all their cell phones away, and then we're doing stuff they ain't never heard of. Zip line, what you mean I'm great? Zip line. And from the moment they come in, all day, every day, we're saying, I love you, I love you, I love you. Don't nobody love me. Ain't nothing love me but the streets. What you talking about you love me? And it's that demeanor and that attitude. But by day two, three, all of a sudden there's a crack in the armor. Prison reform. When you get sentenced, sentenced to working yourself out of prison. When you come out, you are going to be a skilled certified cop and you're going to be able to build a house. If you don't learn how to build a house, you will not get out of there prison. You go. And if you can't do that, that means you ain't ready for society because out here, yeah. people are going to be living regular social lives. Dehumanizing. They've been dehumanized. So you humanize them. 